So the reading this morning is taken from Acts chapter 3 and verses 1 to 16. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now, a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple cake court called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness, we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Uh, Chris is going to speak to us now, but before we do, let's just pray for him. The Lord, we just thank you continually. Thank you for Chris and for sending him to Beryl Baptist. And we just pray this morning, especially that uh, we will be able to receive what you've given him to share with us. Amen. Thanks, Chris. I think this is going to have to come up a little bit, otherwise <laughs> the glasses aren't going to stretch that far. Just whilst I'm doing this, I know it's all a little strange at the moment, isn't it? And you probably all want to sort of be sitting in different places and you know, normally you can just choose where you sit. We have tried to be fair and, you know, if you're sitting at the back this week, you might be sitting at the front next week. Uh, it, it will just change around. And I know it's strange not, not being able to sing at the moment. We all find that frustrating, don't we? But um, just, just again, continue to be respectful of each other because some are only here because that is the rule. Um, so they feel safe to be here. So we just need to carry on bearing with one another. And uh, we are, as much as we possibly can, seeking to balance being honouring to God and uh, all, always, but also trying to comply with the rules that we're required to do. Okay, having got the lectern at the right height and having dealt with that issue. Um, Acts chapter 3 verses 1 to 16. That reading that we heard today, it might have been one of the very first miracles that took place after the day of Pentecost. If you remember, Luke concluded chapter 2 with a summary of how things were at the beginning. Verse 42. 
They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. Sounds great, doesn't it? What a time. And then Luke expands on that little summary in the following chapters. And this is one of the examples of the many wonders and signs. It must have been early on because it was at the time that the believers were still gathering at the temple in Jerusalem. They were still able to do that. They continued to go at the time of prayer. That's three o'clock in the afternoon, the time of the evening sacrifice. They were still doing the sacrifices in the temple. We're told in Acts chapter 2, 46, that they went every day. So every day they went to the temple. The lame man that lay there at the gate did so every day. He's been disabled from birth, so he's been carried there every day for a very long time. He was well known because the people in the temple recognized that he was the man that lay by the gate beautiful. This means that Peter and John must have walked past him before. Probably many times because they were going every day. More intriguingly, Jesus probably walked past him. But this day, the Holy Spirit inspires Peter to speak in Jesus' name. Although Luke said that the wonders and signs were performed by the apostles, Peter is very clear that it's not by his power or godliness, but by faith in the name of Jesus that has made this man strong and completely healed him. Straight away, this alerts us to the selective nature of miracles. They don't happen all the time, but at the time of the Spirit's choosing, and not by our power, but his. What was different about this day to the other days? I don't know. doesn't tell us. Maybe it was the first time that they passed the man since the disciples had received the Holy Spirit. Maybe it was the first day that Peter and John had nothing else. No silver or gold to give the man. Just think about that for a moment. The man gave them his attention because he was expecting to receive something from them. So perhaps he'd received before. Last week, we thought about the periods of radical change in the disciples' lives. Imagine the change for this lame man. He would never have been permitted to enter the temple. The blind and the lame were not allowed to enter the temple. He was forbidden to enter the temple courts. But once he's healed... He's in the temple courts, walking and leaping and jumping. Not really the right behavior for the temple courts, is it? It certainly attracts some attention. He's also praising God. That's only the beginning of the transformation, but what a change that he's already gone through. He's going to face some big changes in his life ahead, isn't he? You'll need to find a new way of making a living, have new possibilities of life they'd never thought possible. I wonder if you think that might be symbolic of all those who are spiritually lame, unable to fully enter into God's plans, but now, by faith in Jesus, made strong and completely healed. And Peter takes a similar approach in his preaching to the day of Pentecost. He is very blunt with the officials in the temple that they need to repent in the light of the vindication of Jesus' claims to be the Messiah. This very powerful phrase, you killed the author of life. Wow. But God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. He says a couple of verses later in verse 19, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out 
and that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. So the invitation is there to all those who put their faith in Jesus to be completely healed. And of course, in Greek, healed and saved are the same word. So to be completely saved. So how do we apply that into our lives? Well, last week we gave out those um, little books uh, and issued a challenge. Try praying. I wasn't, in case you thought I was, suggesting that you haven't tried praying before you understand. It was an invitation to join us in this journey of prayer with an aim that having read the book and engaged with the content, you'd be able to give it away. If you didn't take one last week, there are copies available here this morning, and I'll explain later if you're listening online how you can go about getting them. The point really is that having read it, we give it away. Like Peter and John, you might be inspired to give it to someone that you've passed by many times or who you've always wondered, how could I help them? As I challenge you to think about who you might give the book to, fears may arise. I might like to change that word to will arise. But Michael Harvey helps us to understand that we need to recognize those fears and respond instead with faith. So let's think about some of those fears that might arise. What fear may stop us from inviting someone else to pray? Number one, they may take offense. Well, yes, they may. People took offense at Jesus. Uh, I'm sure some took offense at what Peter said. They may take offense. But you are only inviting them to pray. They can decline if they don't want to do so. And if you look through the book, I think you find that it isn't an offensive book. It's a book that is very gentle and invitational in its approach and very much written for somebody that isn't familiar with the Bible or church going. Second reason you might be afraid to give it. Somebody else might already have given them the booklet. (gasps) They'd end up with two booklets. Doesn't really matter, does it? Third one, they may pray and not get the answer that they are hoping for. They may. I've prayed and not got the answers always that I wanted, but they've begun a conversation with God. And I think we can leave whether he answers or not to God and he can carry on the conversation with them from there. Fourth reason, they may ask me a question I don't know the answer to, quite likely, (laughs) but you can simply tell them you don't know. That is acceptable. Um, At the back of the book, there are several sections about um, topics that might be questions that they have, so you might be able to point them in that direction. So what other fears might prevent you from giving it to somebody? This is a real question, not rhetorical. Anything else that you can think of that might be a barrier to you and make you think, oh, I wouldn't really want to do that. I know you've all got your masks on, so I can't really see whether you're smiling at me or not, but it's a bit terrifying, actually. It's one of those nightmares, isn't it? <laughs> so what did you think? Anything that, that you think, well, that, that might be a barrier to somebody giving, giving the booklet? might be embarrassed to do it yeah yeah and that's a form of fear isn't it you know we we need to face that that we perhaps would feel foolish or um we're overstepping our relationship but if you're doing it out of friendship sometimes we have to do things that we find embarrassing um you know i have to stand up here (laughs) you have to wear a mask you know those things can be embarrassing but you know sometimes these things can be a barrier Uh, But we need to face that fear, to embrace it. And as Michael Harvey said, fear is part of discipleship. We face the fear and we exercise faith. So why bother? They may read the book and encounter the living God. I think that's a real possibility, don't you? You know, God is real. And therefore, if people start praying, even simple prayers like, I'm not really sure if you're there, but if you are, I'd like to know you. I believe in a God who answers that sort of prayer. I'll tell you why, because he answered my prayer when I prayed like that. 
So they may encounter the living God. Secondly, they may pray and receive an answer. Wouldn't that be great? And I think some of you, as you've prayed during this week, may have received answers from God and answers that have met the prayer that you've prayed. It'd be great to hear some of those testimonies in the coming weeks about how God has answered our prayers. And thirdly, because it's good for us to overcome that fear, good for our discipleship to step out in faith and be bold and to be witnesses as Peter and John were. We are witnesses of this. We believe in a living God. Would you join us in praying? So in the booklet, um, it has several sections. Firstly, it, um, it has what it calls the big issue, and that's something that you can pray about, uh, something in your life that's really important right now that you can continue to pray about each day. Then a person that you're concerned for. So there's an invitation to pray for one person or a family member or a couple of family members and to keep bringing them before God. Then there's uh, what it calls wise words. It's just a tiny bit of scripture, but not even... Uh, written in very um, holy language, written in more modern language that people wouldn't necessarily recognize where it's from. But there are footnotes that tell you. Then try this. I wonder if any of you did that during the week. You know, so one day I remember was carrying the stone around with us. Um, you know, something physical that just reminds you to think about God. Um, another time it was every time you pick up the phone, think about communication. Every time you're carrying your keys, think about God opening the way. When you start out on a walk, think about walking with God. So just practical things. And I find those sort of things helpful. Um, I often forget. So therefore, having the little reminders is helpful. Something we try and do in life groups and often forget there as well. Uh, then it gives a testimony. So somebody explains what happened to them when they prayed. And that's, I think, quite helpful to people that are exploring prayer to understand the testimony of others. And then a very simple prayer is given. So if people don't know how to pray, and you'll notice that, that that simple prayer just leads people a little bit closer in relationship with God each time. And so there's an invitation to do that. And at the back, the sections on how to pray, which offers the Lord's Prayer, an explanation of that. Suffering speaks about suffering and how we understand that. It speaks about unanswered prayer. Very helpful little section on that. It speaks about the Holy Spirit and then evidence for faith. So really, within that little tiny booklet, there's a real journey of faith to lead people in understanding of Jesus. So how do we respond? Well, my challenge is simply to read the booklet, and if you've not done that already, and then pass it on to someone else. Explain that you found it helpful, and simply say, why don't you try praying this week and see what happens? And then ask them, how did you get on? So what we're going to do now is to just take a moment to pray, to ask God who he would like you to give the booklet to when you've read it. When we've done that, um, we're going to, I'm going to get you to either write it down or put it into your phone or something to remind you of who it was that you're committing to give it to. So let's just pray and I'll lead you through the rest. So Lord, we thank you that you are the living God. We thank you that you hear our prayers, and that you long for all your children to come into relationship with you. Thank you for the gift of this booklet. Help us to use it wisely. We ask now, Holy Spirit, that you put into our hearts who it is that you would like us to give this booklet to. Amen. You may find that wasn't the name that you expected. Maybe a face came to your mind or a different person to what you thought. But I encourage you to write it down, put it into your phone, make a personal commitment that you will do that because fear will otherwise overtake you and you'll come up with a thousand reasons why you can't possibly do it. So just a commitment really that you will do that. 
So in the next week, give the book out uh, if you've read it already, or the week after that if you've not read it already, and then ask how they got on. So remember, it's our job to invite, and the response is God's responsibility. If you've enjoyed the book, some of you won't have started it yet, but if you've done it and you've enjoyed it and you'd like some similar materials, um, there is another uh, book follow-on from it called Catching the Wave. That's Catching the Wave, which invites you to pray for 40 days for revival. Anybody want revival? Five of us do. Great. So 40 days we pray for revival. And it, we're going to use the themes that come out of that Catching the Wave um, booklet uh, to help us in our services as we come back to church again, church building again. Uh, you can order that as a book, um, and you can do that either by ringing me, or you can get free emails uh, that gives you each day it emails you that day's prayers. And you can find it at the Try Praying website. So if you just type Try Praying into any good search bar, and it will come up in resources 40 days. Uh, if you'd like to have it from me, if you're listening at home, then you can get a copy, order a copy of that. Um, my number is 745-502. I had to read it to make sure I got it right. 745-502. The first week, we're thinking about the family and what, it, what does it mean to have Christ at the heart of your family? And uh, in coming weeks, we're going to look at business, government, media, education, health and church and how we might pray into all of those different areas. So we're starting out in this journey again with God, aren't we? How do we journey together beyond Zoom? How do we go beyond what we've been doing in our separate places as we gather again together? And let's just approach him in prayer together now. Lord, we thank you that prayer is your first way of us gathering. Thank you that that was the first thing that we did together. So we gathered in Barry's freezing cold and, well, no, it was just wet garden. And then another time when it was freezing cold. Thank you that we've prayed in this building. It was the first thing we did in this building was to pray. And Lord, as we gathered at Pentecost, we gathered and prayed that you would send Holy Spirit. We're now, Lord, inviting others into this relationship of prayer. And we ask that it would remain at the heart of all that we are and all that we do. We ask that this morning, Lord, you'd renew and enrich our prayer lives. And we ask that you give us courage to invite others into this relationship too. Amen. Thank you, Shana. Someone tipped over for a moment. Thank you. Sorry, I'm just finish. Um, in a moment, uh, as the weather's so lovely, we're going to go outside and Lynn's going to lead us in some song worship. Take a mask off, Ray, and sing. Um, for you at home, you've not been left out. Peter's chosen some songs and Andy's going to project them through Zoom. Is that the right phrase? I don't know. So uh, we will all be worshipping together. So if you sing loudly at home, we might hear you. And if we sing loudly out there, you might hear us too. But we're just going to close um, with a prayer. And I've adapted some of the words from, <clears throat> excuse me, um, a passage we were looking at a few weeks ago in live group from Psalm 119, verses 41 to 48. So let's just finish with a prayer. Lord, may your unfailing love continue to come to us through your salvation according to your promise. Help us this week to speak of you to those who don't know you yet by using your words of truth. Thank you that because of you, we can be free and can speak of you with a clear conscience. We respect and delight in your commands, your truths. Help us to be your feet and hands in this world. Amen. So thank you very much, Andy. Thank you, Lynn.